This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, right, let's go through and have a look now at how we treat the costs here. Uh, again, within the same financial statement, so balance sheet or position statement and statement of profits or losses at there for the year ended December 20x5. So you have this large pharmaceutical business that is involved in research and development. So remember, research costs are expensed and always will be. Development costs will be capitalized if we meet the criteria. If not, they will be expensed too. Uh, it says it commenced initial investigation into the viability of a new drug. So to you and I, is that not research? Okay. Uh, they started that on the 1st of February at a cost of $40,000 per month. And then on the 1st of August, they were able to demonstrate commercial viability of the new drug and then tend to sell it on the open market once complete. OK, so we're meeting the commercial viability aspect. Uh, we're able to sell it. Uh, I would assume that we have the resources available uh, to be able to, to, to complete it. I would assume, therefore, as well, that it is then technically feasible. So we're looking to get the probable future economic benefits and therefore we will be able to measure it reliably. As it says here, uh, it's then 40,000 per month subsequently. OK, so on the 1st of August, we move from the research into the development phase, don't we? So what we've got that if we're looking at the financial statements. Again, SFP. Statement of profit or loss. There is going to be some research expenditure. Is it there as 40,000 per month initially uh, multiplied by however many months? So all of February, March, April, May, June, July. OK, so is that the six months? So my research is there at 200. And 40,000. Uh, and then subsequent to that, okay, right the way up to the end of the year. Uh, so, end of December, we then have development. So, for August, September, October, November, December is that five months. We then have the development, which is capitalized as an intangible. So 40,000 multiplied by the five months is that the, as your $200,000, okay? Uh, what is then done? Well, you have an intangible. Uh, it's likely to have an indefinite life. So therefore, we will go through there and subject it to annual impairment reviews, okay? Uh, but, but what you're told at the bottom is that the director is confident of the success that he wishes to revalue the intangible at the reporting date okay uh well you can't revalue intangibles there has to be an active market so for an active market to exist uh there must be buyers and sellers available at all time there must be a freely available price for that intangible uh, the items that are being revalued must all be identical in order for it to be an active market. So here there is no active market. So we cannot revalue that intangible upwards. So here we've got the intangible. Is it at 200,000 on the SFP? The director wishes to revalue it upwards because they think they're going to generate high future cash flows, which when discounted back to present value might give them some sort of fair value doesn't matter it is not in an active market so therefore we can't revalue it upwards but the good thing there is that because we have those high future cash flows due to the success of the potential success of this intangible that will therefore mean that there is no impairment okay so there will not be a reduction 
in the value of that asset. If we thought we weren't going to generate those high future cash flows, then at the end of the period, we could potentially go through there and impair the carrying value of that intangible. But here, there is no evidence to indicate that there is an impairment to be carried out. Okay, so there you have it.